Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. Some of you know that we live in the Villages, Florida. We're retired. Mm -hmm. We've been retired tw thir almost 13 years. Yes. What? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Time flies mm -hmm. when you're uh, when you're retired, but yeah, uh, we bring you little tidbits about our life here in Florida. Mm -hmm. We take you on day trips and all that kind of thing. We we hope that each and every one of you will subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us. YouTube takes note of that and they promote us a little bit when you have more subscribers. So right. thank every one of you that take the time to do that. It means a lot to us. We're kind of back to normal after the holidays. We are. We've had so much going on since actually, well, since the 1st of November. And busy, busy all the way through November, December, and the first part of January. We've got birthdays. we got holidays. I have <laughs> never seen such an outpouring of love and affection <laughs> oh, oh, look for her on her birthday. Look behind us. Yeah. Look, at, the, look at those cards. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Yes. You brightened and, uh, up my day for sure. My whole week. I didn't see her for two days, thanking you all and commenting on those uh, Facebook <laughs> happy birthdays. So. But that is uh, that's oh. amazing that you would take time out of your day to do yeah, that. Really so fun. thank you, thank all of you. She really got a blast out of that. Yeah, a blast, and I was blessed. What are you doing? It's a black shirt. You know, it's hard to wear a black shirt. <laughs> well, we spent time with friends. We've gotten back into the routine of. Uh, oh yeah. Going out to eat with friends and uh, yeah. scouting out some places for our out and about. That's right. And I got to play fun. Samba this last week, so that was fun. Um, I didn't get to go to Bargains and Blessings Friday, but I will next week. So I hope to see some of you there. We went to a movie. What was I forget what it was called, but it was the third Hunger Games yeah, movie. That's right. That's right. Well, I don't Pretty know. good. One of our viewers wrote, and we, we, we posted a scene of that. We were the only people. <laughs> I mean, the absolute only people in the entire Theater. That entire theater. Crazy. Some of you uh, announced about, why are you wearing a blanket? I always take a blanket to the theater. Sometimes it is so cold, especially in the summertime. That's where she hides all her Snickers and the <laughs> McDonald's cheeseburger. And I'm just kidding. No, we don't not. do that. <laughs> I am kidding. I am kidding. We did not do that. We did not do that this time. But <laughs> we have before taken it. But um, it's cold in there. Sometimes the air conditioning, you guys know that it's really cold in there sometimes. So I always bring a blanket and curl up in it. So One of our viewers wrote in that it's, nobody was there because nobody wants to see that. Oh, well, we, went, we wanted to see it. Yeah. So hey, I thought it was pretty good. It was good. I enjoyed it. and makes us want to go back and watch the other couple uh, shows again. Yeah. yeah. And we went on a cart ride and you watched it on Thursday, many of you. And we were blown away by your comments. Yeah. You liked it, and yeah. thank you so much. It was sort of accidental because yeah. we did the entire thing being witty and giving you all this <laughs> repartee, and uh, our microphones weren't working yeah, very well. Yeah, it happens again. So I couldn't put that on. Couldn't couldn't subject you to that. So yeah. we came home and yeah. threw all the original audio away, and we did voiceover from the trip and remembered what we could and yeah. you liked it. And take a picture, take a look at this picture of Jerry. This is what happens when he comes back and edits and when he has to do a voiceover. I come in the in the, here in the, in the family room and I look at him and he's, you'll see, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> high, like I said, we're high tech here. We are high tech. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we're back to regular stuff and she's getting a new e-bike. Uh, the company that, that uh, we had last time that tricycle. Remember that beautiful tricycle? It was a little bit too big for her. Mm -hmm. It was a it was a regular adult size, and yeah. so they're sending her a brand new, smaller trike. Yeah, it's a lot and smaller. And she's going to try it, and uh, we're going to hopefully do a video on that. And uh, I think you're going to love it. I hope so. She's a little bit on the. I don't want to look like a granny. Uh, don't say that because there's a lot of people out well, there. Well, and you are a granny, and I'm I a grandpa. Am, I am, but I, I just looked at and went. Not it sure. won't tip over. That's it will true. not tip over. Remember the time you waved at people and you crashed the other bike? I was just on a regular bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh we don't. Gosh. This will prevent that. Well, so yeah. hopefully we'll bring it to you. We'll bring it I to think you. you'll like it. I, I know she's going to love it. She just doesn't know it. <laughs> just don't know it yet. <laughs> we have some great uh, questions for today, and we're going to catch up on the shout outs. Last week our oh, yeah. our show was kind of thrown into flux because we were in Jacksonville. Yeah. And we didn't have access to our printer and a lot of things that we need to put on a deluxe yeah. show for you like today, yeah. this here deluxe show. Yeah. So we did it in the car on the way back. And we could not, 
Uh, we didn't have access to all the people that we wanted to thank. Yes. So we have it today. Yeah. There is a small thing. If you don't see your name, we'll try to get you next week. But this particular program that we use to scroll those names will only do so many and then it cuts off. Yeah. So if you got cut yeah. off, we're yeah. sorry. Yeah. But don't think we don't appreciate you because we, we do. really do. We really do. And here we have done it again. We're into how many minutes? We're seven <laughs> minutes in and all we've done is... Give a <laughs> we have some great questions for you today, like I said, and we're going to have a session of bubble wrap oh, yeah. with Peter Bernard. What is going on here? What I'm doing with my tankless water heater could save you on maintenance in the future, and it's easy to do. I'm Peter Bernard, and that's this week's bubble wrap. You're going to like that, and another Ask Amy, where the staff of Amy Pittman, Pittman Law Associates, does a question answer thing for you if you have questions send them in but you're going to get another one of those today mm -hmm. it's going to be a great show hit it wally send us your questions we've got your answers jerry and linda's mailbag monday let's start off with our viewer video question this one is from the village of saint catherine oh, yeah hello linda and jerry this is Jim. And this is Brenda. And this is Willow. We're calling from the village of St. Catherine and we have a question for you. Why don't the villages collect recycle? Enjoy watching your show. Thank you. Thanks. Recycling as we knew it stopped in 2020 after the pan or during the pandemic, right? And no more different, different bags in the driveway, separating and all that kind of thing. So we went to a new company called the Covanta Waste, uh, Waste uh, to Energy Facility, and that's in Okahumpka. And so now everything we have goes outside in one bag. And then they take it and they burn it into energy. So that's our recycling here in the villages. I'm going to give our garbage guys. Is that right? Sanitation. I don't want to insult you. Sanitation, Sanitation. workers. Mm -hmm. Um a big shout out because they are fantastic. Our pickup is on Mondays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. but you got to have it out early. They come at 6.30 or 7. Yes, they do. And they, when they leave, you'll never know they were here. No. You know, they just take, take those bags. And we used to have a brown bag for any uh, yard trimmings like uh, uh, palm tree cuttings uh, yeah. or, or dirt or grass or whatever. whatever. We would have that in a brown paper bag. We'd have a clear bag with recyclables so they could see inside that they were all recyclables, right? Right, that's true. And then we could have a black bag with all our usual garbage. But now we just have any bags we want. Yeah. Brown, clear, black, whatever. They take them all. They throw them in that truck mm -hmm. and they do a wonderful job. And like she said, it's all burned. It's incinerated yeah. Yeah. into energy. Right. So they do a good job with that. And I'm That's their story and they're sticking to they're it. They're sticking you know. to it. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to show you a picture that one of our, it's actually a, an illustration that one of our viewers made for me. I got a call from Jeff Weimer. He's the fellow that did that beautiful wildlife calendar that we oh, showed yeah. you weeks ago. And he asked me what my favorite classic car was. And well, I, I started thinking back and the only classic car I've ever had wasn't even a classic when I had it. It's only yeah. a classic now. Mm -hmm. It was a Plymouth 318 satellite. Right. And the satellite was a sporty looking car. It looked like a road runner. And uh, I loved that car. It had the air shocks. You know, I could, psh, you know, drag up the back end a little bit. And it was a good, <laughs> quick car, and I wish I still had it. Anyway, he came up with this illustration, and that is sweet. I love that. It reminds me of the old rat fink days. You oh, remember those, yeah. those rat finks and those mm -hmm. hot rods yeah. and yeah. all that stuff? So, Jeff Weimer, thank you very much. Yeah. That's really neat. That's really neat. I very, like that. Very special. This is from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Are there areas in the villages where flooding is not an issue? Is there a way to find out which areas are prone to flooding? We don't have flooding issues where we live now, and it is one of our concerns for moving to the villages. That's a concern. Well, you just uh, never say never, but yeah. it has not flooded in five years that we've been here. Mm -hmm. We've never had anything close. A couple years before we got here, there was a heavy, heavy rain during one of the hurricanes. I mm -hmm. can't keep them straight. But it flooded. Yeah. The people that run the villages, the people that design the villages yeah. know what they're doing. Right. This place is designed 
to stay above water. Every neighborhood. So there's not one where you could say, well, stay away from that. Peanut Valley because that will flood on you. <laughs> no, it's not like that. No. Uh, here, they're all above. And some of the golf courses and the refuges are designed to hold that rainwater. Yeah. It'll go there. And in fact, some of the golf courses may close yes. for extended yeah. periods yeah. after a hurricane or a severe rain mm -hmm. because that's what they're designed to do. And it might be inconvenient for a golfer, but it, it keeps the water out of our homes. And homes. Hopefully we'll continue to do so. Yeah. Knocking on wood. This question is from Shelby. What are the main reasons that people sell their home in the villages and move? Mm. Well, there's a lot of reasons for why people You know the, the old saying, though, here in the villages? Yes, I do. It says that everybody that moves here will end up living in three different houses by the time it's over with. Yeah. I don't think that's true, but you know, it's an exaggeration. Uh, but some people do move, yeah. so why do they move? Well, I created a list here, just trying to brainstorm with myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was quite a brainstorm in there. They want to downsize maybe. So you, you come here, you buy a home. Ours is not big, but say 10 years from now, I get tired of vacuuming and- Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Do you know where the vacuum is? And I want to move to maybe a villa, uh, something smaller, or maybe even the lofts apartments. Who knows? That's right. So downsize. Or maybe, in like our friends Mark and Sue. Right. They upsized. They, they upsized. Yeah. They came here and they bought a villa, and it was a beautiful villa, a corner lot. Yes. Probably had room for a pool, yeah. but the house itself wouldn't hold all of Mark's trophies. He's a great <laughs> golfer. And... Uh, Yep. They decided to get a, another home, and they bought a beautiful home with a pool. Mm -hmm. So they upsized. And maybe somebody wants more privacy, you know, uh, the kissing lanai thing. Yeah. You, you buy one, and you get there, and you realize you can tell your, oh, look, uh, Betty's having a coffee in her lanai, yeah. and they're watching uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Right. <laughs> you know, you may not like that, so you might want more privacy. Or maybe you want a pool, and you have a house without a pool. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you have a house with a pool and you realize, ooh, that baby takes a lot to too get. Too much work. Too much work. We're going to get a house without a pool. Or maybe you've got too much yard. You don't want to pay the water bill yeah, and the. Right. Uh, or maybe your yard's too small. You're craving more yard. You know, yeah, there's maybe, so many reasons. Maybe you have health issues yeah. and you want to move to, uh, to be with family. Or maybe one of your family members somewhere is sick and you've got to move up and take care of them. You know, there's so many things. Maybe you've lost your uh, pension and you can't make your payments. Oh, you know, that's yeah. one reason. Yeah. Uh, maybe you won the lottery and you want to move and get yourself a, one of those houses over there on uh, yeah. a Conservation Trail or over on Valley Brook. With the two lights. Where they have the two street lights. <laughs> you know, maybe you want that. Maybe you just want a change of neighborhood. You could be. Just might want a, a fresh yeah. change. Yeah. Lots of reasons, you know. Uh, or you maybe want a wood shop in your garage. Oh, yeah. Maybe you want to. <laughs> uh, somebody wrote me a letter this morning, and I answered it. And they said, I bet you're envious because I have a three-car garage. You know, some of the garages, mm. instead of that small golf cart garage, they have a full garage. And so I wrote back yeah. and said, I am jealous. And by the way, can I, store, can I buy a boat and store it in your third garage? That's right. So I'm waiting to hear back from him. <laughs> I would love to have a little boat. Mm -hmm. There is no way here. I've got that kayak in there, and I still have to step around that, and I throw my back out of whack every time I get in the golf cart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, this is from Jerry Sedlaco from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was thinking about joining one of the many country clubs around the villages. How do memberships work? Are there different prices for each club? And what does a membership get you? Good job on his name, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, there is no fee to join any. There, there is no joining a country club here. Hmm. You can't join any of them. Uh, they're open to everybody. If you're a resident, you can go to any of the country clubs. Hmm. And anybody, resident or not, can play golf at the country club courses. Yeah. You can buy what they call an enhanced membership, which will allow you a little cheaper green fee mm -hmm. and a little bit of priority over other people that are signing up. But that would be good at all the courses. It's not at one sim single course. Mm -hmm. I just messed up you your hair. You messed up my hair. <laughs> Y'all like her hair? She got, got a haircut got about, a about 10 days ago, and got she's not happy with it, but I love it. I like it. Jury's out. I kind of like it. I know some of you have commented on it, but uh, at first I thought, oh, I'm not sure I like all the layers in it. Let's take a break from our questions and go to Peter Bernard with this week's Bubble Wrap. Hi 
Hi, Jerry and Linda. Many homes in the southern part of the villages have tankless hot water. This is my gas tankless hot water system here in the village of Citrus Grove. Take a look down here. That is an electrical submersible pump. What you do is you put some vinegar in this pail and circulate that water through these lines up into your water heater and then back out and you do that for about 45 minutes. What that's going to do with a mixture of white vinegar and water is it'll descale the heat exchanger in here and make it so that your water heater runs more efficiently. Specifically, this pump is pumping water out of this pail into my water heater and then up through the heat exchanger and then back out here and then it recirculates into the pail again. You can let it run for about 45 minutes. Again, this is two gallons of white vinegar and then the water that's in your water heater. And once you've done so, you'll be able to see the little filter that's in there. All right, there it is, right there. You can hold it up to the light, and if you have sediment in there, take it into an indoor faucet. Use a little toothbrush to get all the little bits out. And you'll wanna make sure you do this before you reinstall this into your tank again, and then turn on the, the water into your house. This kit cost me about $100 on Amazon. It comes in two days, you can set it up, and instead of paying somebody about $100 to have it done, you buy this kit and you can do your house and your neighbors. It's easy. I'm Peter Bernard with this week's Bubble Wrap. That's a timely topic, Peter. Thank you very much. Most of the new homes, if not all of them here, come with a tankless water heater, and it must be serviced. And you know when you call a professional in, it gets a little costly. So Peter used that kit, and he, that will be featured on our uh, Amazon storefront. So if you go to our webpage, jerryandlinda.com, you can go to our Amazon storefront and see that kit that he used. But Peter wants to caution everyone, please read all the directions uh, mm. because, you know, yeah. he's an amateur just like us with a home improvement and yeah. uh, he did it himself and he's very happy with it. But for you, please learn the right way to do it before you yeah. do it because it's an expensive piece of equipment and there might be some safety involved. Yeah. So do your homework. Right. Bob Miller writes, how about contractors when you want to remodel your house? So far for us, it's been horrible finding one. Mm. A couple things, Bob. Number one, use the Nextdoor app and read them carefully because they will let you know if somebody's a fly by night or maybe somebody that'll come and take your deposit and skip town. And also be very cautious when anybody asks you for payment in advance. It's a general rule when dealing with contractors if you can not give them anything in advance, that's preferable because uh, sometimes they'll take your money and, and not get yeah, back to you. That's right. But there are plenty of reputable builders here in the villages and the word of mouth is, is really strong. So yeah. go to Talk of the Villages, go to Next Door, yeah. or you can ask your village's sales agent. They actually have a list of builders that they refer people to. And although they don't guarantee their work or, or endorse them in any way, I've got a feeling that if the village just has their name on a list, that there's no negativity mm -hmm. and uh, you can right, probably trust right. that builder. So give that a try. This is from Anita. Can I teach private swim lessons to children and adults in the villages? I'm a, sw a swim instructor here in Alabama with a very good business. Can you give me any feedback about this? Well, Anita, you cannot teach swim lessons in the pools here in the villages and get paid. If you want to get paid, you're going to have to do it in your own pool. Uh, the pools here are designed for social activities. Like we, I go to water aerobics and the instructor there gives free lessons. I mean, she free um, activities. So you can do that on a social basis. But as getting paid, you can't do it in the pools here. Now you can be uh, apply to be an instructor in the academy, the Villages Academy, and that way you can get paid. Yeah, I, yeah. I got that uh, a question like that. A couple of years ago, a guy wanted to give golf lessons at mm -hmm. the driving range. Right. And, you know, you, my first thought was, sure, why not? Why couldn't he? But then you have to think, well, they pay, they have an instructor staff. Yeah. And, you know, if you got a couple of guys out on the driving range, if I mean, if one can do it, two can do it. If two yeah. can do it, five can do it. Yeah. And they're taking business away from the golf instructors right. there. So right. totally understandable. Mm -hmm. And these pools are designed for our recreation and fun. And if you are there and somebody's paying you and they're swimming laps and 
you know, some kids are there throwing toys around and playing in the yeah, pool. Yeah. You might tell those kids, get out of the way. I'm giving a lesson here. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not. Can't do that. Can't do that. No. So they just get your own pool. Have your own pool <laughs> in your backyard. Have them over. Or you, you can, know. or you can be an instructor in the Rich, in Richmond Academy, and then then you'll be able to get paid. I hate to tell, say this, but I am a terrible swimmer. Mm-hmm. I am a flat out bad swimmer. I mean, I can get from one side of the pool to the other. Yeah. I could probably go across and back three or four times, but it ain't pretty. And I can't tread water. What's up with these treading water? It's so easy for these little mermaids like this. <laughs> I can float on my back though. Well, maybe you should try some kind of private lessons in somebody's pool. It's kind of embarrassing when you're my <laughs> age and you're getting well, swimmers. Well, if it's private, you'll be okay. People, I gotta start over. Come on, girl. <laughs> I gotta get my thoughts together. I had a piece of paper here. Private lessons. If you, well, not really private lessons. I gotta start that again. This would be the third time. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I was just gonna blend that in. Okay. It's a little witty, you know. Oh, you make. Where am I starting now? Are you just? You, we were just gonna keep going. I feel short today. Company, I'm sorry. Got to go back. Kavanta. Let's start again. Yeah. Recycling stopped. Oh, you gonna start? Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? Super. You need to wipe your nose. You look like you got drips right here. Right your nose is all wet. Underneath, it's real wet looking. Uh, over here toward me. Okay. <laughs> it's not that. You're just gonna come down, drip in your face. Right. Let's uh, have our airs. <laughs> You're blaming me. I am blaming you. I'm blaming you right. (laughs) 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 That's a wrap. (laughs) Okay, Brian G. I bet that's Brian Glombowski. Ah. I'm sure I said, sorry, Brian. But he wrote and said, we recently visited and noticed stains on homes. Mm. Looks like sprinkler patterns. Is this non-potable water? Is it typical? Ah. Yeah, we see it too. And it is unsightly. And you are correct. That is due to the sprinklers, in my totally unofficial and uneducated opinion. Because they use recycled water from the ponds here. Uh And maybe that's, you know, pond scum. Maybe it's uh, iron in the water. Maybe that's it's another what I'm mineral. Thinking. But um, we see it all the time. Mm-hmm. You're, you can adjust those sprinklers so they don't hit your house. You know, right. that's what you should do. Right. Because over time, it will leave an unsightly stain. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to water your plants with, with potable water. No, no. Or is it potable? I never I always get that confused. And then you all tell me, and then I forget. Then I forget. Potable, potable. Yesterday, my son asked me something, the oldest, and it was her son too. Yeah. It was both of our sons. And he asked me a question, and I knew the answer, but I could not think of it. And I'm telling you, it's happening uh-huh. more often. Is it happening to you all? Mm-hmm. I hate that because I, I used to think I was pretty sharp. And uh, yeah. now I'm, yeah. I'm doing like, what? And then I hung up the phone, of course, five minutes later, I remembered what you it was. I remembered what it was. Well, but, that's uh, happening to man, all of us, I think. That's, yeah. I guess your my brain is so full that uh, it's full. Yeah, it's just full. Full of what? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is from Sid Adams. I have been able to read some of the talk of the villages. Very frequently, it's said that there are no good eateries in the villages. Is that really true? Well, there are many restaurants. No, no, it's not true. Let's just say no. It's, there are good no, eateries. There are here. good eateries, and there's some good dishes at each one. Right. And you know what our favorites are if you watch us. Yeah. And some of you are new, so we'll, we'll say a few of them again, and especially so, some of you that are coming on a lifestyle, you might want to try. We love Oakwood Smokehouse. We love it. Yeah. It's just outside the villages yes. now. But, I mean, we, we usually have a car. People have a car. Yeah. You can go, you know, yeah. five, ten minutes outside. Mm-hmm. Oakwood Smokehouse. Uh, yeah. We love red sauce. We love bluefin. Bluefin has never let us down. No. So that's a good restaurant. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> but I read the uh, next door the other day, which I refer people to, yeah. and it had some scathing letters for red sauce. Uh, but it just goes to show you, you can't please all the people all of the time. All the time. You're going to see the out and about today where I have a, a few comments 
that are a bit negative about a country club restaurant here. Yeah. But we've had plenty of good experiences mm -hmm. there too, but we just try to tell you the whole spiel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there are plenty of good eateries, and there are a lot more than we mentioned. What would be some more? Let's just crank out a few. Well, um, I like Fiesta Grand. I like the, the the Mexican restaurant there in the villages in Brownwood, and there's Prima is, mm -hmm. is another good one. Mm -hmm. um, I like I Barbecue. It's a little mom and pop barbecue yeah. joint. Yeah. It's good. Uh, there are a lot of places I like that she doesn't really like because they're not. Wolfies, and that's a little place in Leesburg, and it's yeah. a mom and pop kind of place. And it's like cafeteria food. It's it's good. But if you're it's a good. real gourmet, you know, you're yeah. never going to really be satisfied until yeah. you go to Chop House like, Ruth Chris or uh, yeah. oh, the Chop House is great. Really Chop good. House is great. Yeah. Hey, and we liked uh, Gators. Yes. Up at Sumter Landing and uh, Cody's mm -hmm. has their days, and mm -hmm. you know there are plenty of places that I'm totally fine to eat. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's Culver's. You know, Culver's <laughs> is. Magnificent, yeah. and if I really want to treat, I'll go to KFC. <laughs> One fellow commented on a local publication that there are 324 square miles and 147 eateries in the villages. Okay. And he's and he was commenting about some person said there's no good no good place to eat, and he said and not one good one. Gee, you must be a really fun person. <laughs> yeah. If, if there's all these restaurants and you can't find one that you like. You are hard to please. Well, there's no place like home, right? Yeah, but we don't we don't uh, invite people often for Linda's meatloaf because I like some leftovers. Oh, I've shared the recipe. I'm going to share some more recipes on the website, so uh, that's, yeah. that's in the future here. Let's go shortly. Out and about. Out and about. Today, we're going to go to Havana. Mm -hmm. No, not Cuba. Oh, okay. Havana Country Club. It's over on the corner of Morse Boulevard and Odell Circle. Mm -hmm. And we had the privilege of taking five of our kids and one of our sons there the other day. They came five up for Linda's birthday. Five of our grandkids. He said five of our kids. Yeah, grandkids. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, see what I told you? <laughs> um, yeah. We, we went there for lunch. It's open to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you don't have to be a member of the Country Club to eat in the restaurant. They have a full bar, they have a great menu, mm -hmm. and it's reputed to be one of the very best restaurants of the country club restaurants. Mm -hmm. It's built around that Ernest, Ernest Hemingway theme. Yeah. Uh, they, it's right next to the golf courses, Kenya and Kilimanjaro right. and Hemingway, so they play off of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's get back to the food. I had a fried chicken dinner. That's right. Three-piece special that day, it was $15.99 with mashed potatoes and gravy and the vegetables for once and thank you Havana Country Club the vegetables of the day were green beans and carrots normal vegetables for once normal <laughs> I love that and uh, what did you have I had a Cuban sandwich a half a Cuban sandwich and it was it was very good and then I had a bowl of lobster bisque which was delicious right our son got a fish and chips dinner with a nice big fillet of fish. Mm -hmm. It was fried and uh, French fries and coleslaw. So mm -hmm. that's the typical typical, uh, typical one. But it, he said it was good. But the kids, and here's where I had a little bone to pick. <laughs> Their meals were good. One of them got hamburger and fries. Mm -hmm. Two of them got uh, macaroni and Jeez. cheese and fries. Right. Pizza. And the other... Two split a pizza. Yeah. Ouch! But the thing was, those kids' meals were twelve ninety nine. A kid's hamburger and kids' French fries and a little sippy cup full of juice or whatever. Yeah, Coke. Twelve ninety nine. Come on, Havana. That's a little steep. I would think a, a child's meal would cut no more than ten dollars. Oh, no six dollars, five dollars. Come that's, on. That's a little cheap. You know, the kids come yeah. and visit their grandparents. And you don't have to stick it to those grandparents when the when the kids come. Yeah. You know the grandparents are going to come back and eat. Give them a break on those grandkids. Hey, there's a whole gaggle of them. <laughs> yes. Anyway, they yes. loved it though, and yeah, uh, the bill for for the let's see how many five, six, seven, eight of us. <laughs> sorry, you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why you hug me after you sneeze? Oh, huh? No, okay. I didn't. oh yeah, sorry. Um, one hundred and twenty-five dollars plus tip. So. A little lunch there. That, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are so fortunate to be able to offer a segment on legal stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Although stuff is not really a legal term. Legal and advice, legal uh, tips. T Amy Pittman is a wonderful attorney. She is an office close by here in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a co-attorney. Her name is Audra Platt. Yeah. And today Audra has a message for us. question that we get is if a client puts their house into a trust do they have to have the beneficiaries approval if they want to sell the house in a couple years and the answer is no to at least the type of trust that we set up at Pittman Law Office so the type of trust that we set up is called a revocable trust and it means that you are in charge the client is in charge of their trust until they become incapacitated or when they pass away. So you put your house in your trust and in five years you wanna sell it, no problem. You don't have to ask any beneficiaries for any approval. You can do it, no consequences with your trust. Thank you. Thank you, Audra. We always appreciate you guys taking that time for us yeah. and for our listeners and, and viewers. Some of you listen. I'll get comments all the time that you're listening yeah. while you do your housework or while you're driving, maybe, or whatever. We don't or care. On the we're, treadmill. we're glad you're with us and uh, appreciate it very much. And if you want to send in a question to Amy or Audra, please send it to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com and we will forward that right over to them. Time for your word jumble. Last week, everybody got it. You all are so smart. You're getting smarter every week. The answer was WVLG Radio. That's the Village's own radio station. Mm -hmm. When you go to the squares, right. they pipe it in. You can listen to it at home. You can listen to it in Canada if you live up there. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you all got it. Now remember, I'm going to give you a new clue right now. And if you get the answer, don't put it in the comments. Just let us know you got it and be satisfied that you are a gifted person. <laughs> the clue this week, these two neighbors are connected by... CR44. Now that's a little bit of a brain teaser, isn't it? Good luck to you. Uh, oh, it's time for entertainment. <laughs> we don't have a song for that. You're just supposed to you jump should, right you in. You start singing a song. Jump right in. Jump right in. Well, at the Savannah Center this week, we have Colin and Brad, and they'll be there Tuesday and Wednesday. A great show. And then on the 20th... You know Saturday, who Colin is? That's Colin Mockery. Oh. Remember the Drew Carey show that Colin... That he's fantastic. And Brad... Okay. Yeah, they're great. That would be a really fun show to see. It's going to be a kind of an ad lib thing, I think. Oh, fun. So that's going to be neat. Very fun. And then on the 20th, on Saturday, is the original cabaret at the Savannah Center. So that will be really a fun one. You, you Not so much for you, but for me, I would love cabaret. <laughs> I'm still on the first one, the Colin and, and Brad thing. Okay. I'll talk about that. I have just, you know, all these reels on Facebook. I'm, yeah. I'm addicted to them. He is. <laughs> they're so good. Carol Burnett's been popping up on my reels. I never appreciated her. She was the bomb. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. She was awesome. So funny. If you get a chance to watch those reels with Carol Burnett, watch them. She is a jewel. She's another one of our treasures, mm -hmm. I think. Absolutely. Why well, didn't I appreciate her when I was younger? I appreciated her. Oh. I did. I loved her show. Well, at the Sharon this week on uh, Tuesday, the life and music of Michael George. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's George Michael. George Michael. Yeah. Sorry, George Michael. I guess you're not a big fan. <laughs> Why don't I read it that way? I have no he idea. was in a band called Wham. Okay. You remember Wham? No. So, George Michael here on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. And then on Thursday, the 18th, is the Sophia Philharmonic Orchestra. Oh, but that's good. I like Philharmonic orchestras, I love it. I used to play the flute. I still have my flute. Uh, and I used to love orchestra music. I will ask Alexa to play. And I want to say it too loud, she'll start playing. I, I ask her to play orchestra music a lot. And then on Friday, this Friday, is the Glenn Miller Orchestra. And my parents used to listen to that mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. So that was the end my grandmother. Anyway, good stuff coming in the villages. Sweet and salty. This first is the suite, and Linda's going to read that. But we don't know who sent this. 
it just came. And whoever it is, if you realize this is you, please send us an email at villagesnewcomers at gmail.com and let us know who you are. We'd like to connect with you. We sure would. Yeah, we go sure ahead. would. I absolutely love you guys. I just lost my husband January 2nd of 44 years. The love of my life. I can't stop crying, which now I'm going to start crying. I finally got out of bed and turned on my iPad, and my favorite travel buddies had a new episode I hadn't seen yet and am watching it now. If only for a few minutes I stopped crying, I absolutely love you too. You always bring a smile to my heart. I would love to meet you someday. Well, if you send us your name, we will do our absolute best to make that happen. And, yeah. and uh, w- you know, I, we, we're touched by your letter yes. and uh, yes. we offer you our sincere condolences Absolutely. And, uh, and look forward to hearing from you. Mm-hmm. And here's another one. This is uh, from Linus Spacehead. I dislike people my own age. Hmm. I always have. I will never purposely move into a homogenous community of similar aged people. It seems like some weird version of hell to me. Having said that, this this couple seems like two very nice people. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Linus Spacehead. A little bit. I mean, I, I understand, uh, uh, yeah. but I don't understand. I mean, we all get old. You don't think you will. I told somebody yesterday, I remember when I was a teenager playing on a Little League baseball team. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the coaches were old guys. Now I look back at those pictures they were like 38, 40 years old, and I thought of them as old. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying, but you know what? We moved here for that reason. We yes. like that it's homogenous. We like that the people here are quiet. They have the same interests as we do. We don't look like it as a weird version of hell. We look at, of it as a wonderful version of paradise. We do. And i got to add to that, though. If I want my little fix of children and uh, young adults... We go to the grocery store, which feeds communities around the villages. Uh, we also go to uh, the, the family pools. We see children there in our churches. So we do see children uh, younger and uh, teenagers and young adults. So we do get to see them and be around them. And, and even the stores, the Lowe's, all the stores. So uh, we do get our fix there. But And, of course, we see our grandchildren. They live in yeah. Orlando. So we like kids. Yeah. You know, just living do. here doesn't mean we don't like kids. We no. like kids. We yeah. love kids. We do. We do. Time for shout outs. We'd like to recognize the friends of our channel. Like we told you last week, we left you out. We're going to put a bunch of you on this time. Mm-hmm. How, how do you get on that list? Well, you just, you know, say hello to us in public. Or or maybe you donated with that dollar sign down below. Or you might uh, send us a card. <laughs> or send us a card. Or just yeah. uh, just make contact with us. You know, yeah. we love to meet people. It's a, the best part of our channel. That's so right. thank every one of you. And uh, we appreciate all of you. Congratulations to Gary and Peggy Jones. You can see them by that sign at the sales center. They're the proud owners of a new home in the villages. Yes. And here are Ron and Barbara DePuzo. And we went to a very nice driveway party and got to meet him because Ron had the same birthday as myself. So we kind of celebrated together. That was kind of a fun day. Yeah. And remember, he's the guy. That won our scavenger hunt, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And he and his wife came running over into yeah. Uh, yeah. the Eisenhower Rec Center, and we gave him a T-shirt, right. and uh, that, that was, was really fun. What, yeah. a, what a sweet couple. This is Dean and Trina Shackelford. They're in front of that sign that I mentioned a little bit ago. They bought a home in the village of Sanibel, and here's a picture of Trina with you, Linda. Yeah. She saw you in a parking lot. Actually, her daughter saw you yeah. and said, there's, there's, oh my gosh, there's a Linda. And I, they jumped out and got a picture. I get tickled when people do that. <laughs> but anyway, fun. Glad to meet you. Well, this is Walter and Allison Wonderlick. Uh, they're from Maine and have been coming to the villages since 2006. And they bought a home in Monarch Grove and couldn't be happier. And we met them over at uh, Havana Country yeah, that's Club. That's right. That's right. And like I told you earlier, we had the whole gaggle of kids at Havana Country Club, yeah. and we bumped into Louie and Cammie. Yeah. They were really nice folks, yeah. and we spent a couple of minutes chatting with them. 
Brian Gomblowski sent this picture of his wife, Debbie. She's enjoying a birthday dinner at Culver's. Debbie, we've been there many times. We love Culver's. She shares your birthday with you, January 7th. Uh, well, you know what? That's not the only one we've got. That's well, Ron DePuzo, you went to his party. Right. And then my twin sister. So there's a lot of good people that's born on January 7th. <laughs> Happy birthday, Debbie. <laughs> yeah. But you know, speaking of Culver's, what's your favorite there? I'm going to tell you, my favorite is probably that Icelandic cod sandwich they saw. That's delicious. Very good, very, very good, good, very good. They also have a tenderloin. And it's, it's okay. It's a little dry unless you really smother it with uh, mayonnaise and yeah. whatever. Let's work on that recipe over yeah. there. <laughs> but that single butter burger is the way to go. It I mean, is. that is a beautiful sandwich. Yeah. I love it. So Culver's has a lot of good offerings. I'm never disappointed. No, I always get the little uh, children's menu sack because it has the fries, extra crispy, and then you get the free little ice cream with the coupon on the side. So, yeah. I think everybody does it. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Bag Monday. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here.